Our trip to Goodison Park, you feel, is actually one of those pivotal moments in the season. I, I, I know I've said that a couple of times already, but I'm really referring more to the running now um, because we've got Everton and then we've got Burnley uh, ahead of then the final sort of 10 games of the season. And I'm just obviously focusing just on the Premier League at the moment. The Burnley game's obviously sandwiched in between our last 16 uh, Europa League tie with Freiburg. So the next few weeks are really pivotal. So you look at the Everton game as seeing that as one that now, like if we want to sort of get some momentum going, this is really, really important. We don't want to suddenly have a big step back after such a good performance and result against Brentford. Because let's be honest, that Brentford result breathed some life, breathed some belief back into this season. Because ahead of that game, I mean, had we had lost that game and put in a bad performance, it would have been very hard to see any kind of uh, positive end to this campaign. It really would have felt the mood would have been so, so low. But, and the fact we've also got, you know, Paqueta back and the performance that we put on as well, it just gives you that hope that actually, do you know what? There is things to fight, to fight for here and some things that we can start actually believing in and start dreaming a little bit. Um, and so I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm not getting, I, I don't, I'm not suggesting that, oh my God, one minute is doom and gloom, the next minute we're going to go and win the Champions League. You know, I'm, I'm being realistic here. I'm just saying that it's just breathe that little bit of belief back but we don't want it stumped. We don't want it to suddenly end that quickly at Everton. It's it's a really important game for us and an important game for them, of course. It's a big, big game. Um, before we go on to West Ham, though, talking about the team and, and, and whatnot, let's talk about Everton. I mean, what a strange period this is for that football club. And I'm not just talking about this season and the points deduction. I'm actually talking about the last few years of that club. They just seem to be uh, one, you know, such a big outfit. And they're one that has just been down the bottom now for so long. I can't even remember. It's almost like it's hard to remember the last time they actually were doing pretty well in the Premier League. You know, they've, they've been struggling. And I, I, I've got to say, I do feel for their fans because they're, they're a similar club to West Ham. They are really. They've always been in the, sort of the shadows of Liverpool, i.e. Like we, like we have a few of the London clubs that we've struggled to sort of immerse, um, uh, emerge ourselves out of that. Um, and, you know, we are still doing the same, aren't we? We're, just, we're still fighting to sort of get ourselves in and amongst it. Um, but with Everton, that you just feel that they are the last few years anyway, have they, they, they've really, really struggled. They seem to be in never-ending relegation scrap. Every year, they're sort of surviving by the skin of their teeth. And this year, again, it's just another bleak campaign for them where they have been down the route, down the bottom all season. Of course, they've had this points deduction thing. We'll talk about that in a second. But in general, it's and also they've got the, the issue with the ownership, and it, it, I, it's just felt like a constant struggle at that club. Um, but obviously, I do have the new stadium, something to be excited about. But I can imagine if I was an Everton fan, it's hard to get excited until you know where you're going to be and where what, you know what's going on in terms of their ownership, where they're going to be in the Premier League. It's it's, it's really hard, but. Points deduction wise, they've had some decent news this week. Their 10 point deduction was reduced to six. They got four points back, which has now given them a little bit of breathing space, a little bit of breathing space between them and the relegation zone. But of course, they've still got this second charge hanging over them. I'm a little bit torn with the whole uh, Everton situation with the points deduction. Uh, I mean, yes, I do think the 10 points was, when you first saw it, very harsh and. Uh, I do understand that side of it. And, and I think there was always a confidence from their side that they were going to win uh, any appeal they, the, the appeal they put forward uh, to the Premier League. But at the same time, you do feel like, well, it, it does feel like they've managed that club recklessly, really. Um, at the end of the day, the rules are the rules. The clubs have had to try to... We all have to stick to the same rules. It does feel like Everton have been quite poorly managed by their owners and... And still continue to do so. I mean, the financial situation at that football club, I mean, I don't know the you know the exact figures, but it doesn't look good. From the outside, I mean, the fact there's 777 partners, they're sort of potential new owners, are it appears to be bankrolling the, comp- the, the company and, and the football club. You know, they're, they're, they're paying staff wages to try and get them over the line. It, it doesn't read really good. It really doesn't. And it's, it, it does seem a real concern. And the fact that these owners who are going through this check with the Premier League, whether they are suitable enough to, to actually run the club, seems to be going on and on and on. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't look good, does it? It doesn't It doesn't um, paint a nice picture. And if I was an Everton fan, I, I, I would be concerned. I, I really would. And, I, and it's, it's just, as I say, another thing to add to their list. I know a list, list of their woes. Um, it's a big, big season for them. They've, they've got to survive. I mean, I, I, I can't think of a, a club in a worse situation at the moment than Everton to get relegated in terms of their financial the, the financial implications it would have on them. Uh, I, I think it would be just catastrophic. 
And yeah, it, it, that they are a club that's in a real mess. But one one positive they have got, I mean, as I said, well, actually, two positives. One positive is the stadium, of course. That is, I know it's in a distance at the moment. I don't think they're going to be moving until even after the start of next season. But that is something for fans to be proud of. It looks great. I mean, from what I've seen of it, it looks a really nice, tidy, classy stadium. And one that, is, as a West Ham fan, you look at and think, if only, eh? if only we'd had owners that had wanted to do that um, to build us a stadium that would have been sort of really fit for purpose. But um, yeah, as I say, that's one positive. And the other positive for me is their manager, uh, Sean Dyche. I think he's actually done a really good job there. And he, he, all right, he might not be the most glamorous of managers and play the most exciting, attractive brand of football. But he's a decent bloke. And I think he's gone into there. I, I think you couldn't have asked for much a better manager than that. You know, I really don't. I think he's he's a, a highly experienced. He knows how to deal with it. And he's, although they've not been on, in the best of form for quite a while now, um, I don't think they've, I think they've won one in like 14, 13 games. It's been quite a while. Um, but that being said, he, he, they, they seem pretty steady, pretty resilient. They don't, you don't look at Everton immediately and think they are absolutely guaranteed to go down. Whereas you might look at a couple of other clubs like that. Whereas Everton, you do feel like they've got a decent chance. I still don't think they're out of it, though. I, I, I know that there's a quite a fair few people now say now they've got their points back. And obviously, they could still be deducting further points, which is also looking pretty likely. I, I still think there's a big chance they'll go down. Um, whether they will or not, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm, I, I think it's still a bit early to say. But they will certainly be looking at a game like West Ham at home and seeing as this is an opportunity for us to try and nick some points. Um, because obviously West Ham's form has been poor. I know we've obviously um, performed well against Brentford, but that doesn't breathe, you know, doesn't give you suddenly a belief that well, West Ham are absolutely going to go and dominate this game. I think Everton will certainly see this as an opportunity. So, uh, no, credit to Sean Dyer. I think he's been good. Um, the takeover, though, is, is something that I think is just crazy at this club. I really, I'm not sure about the 777 partners at all. Um, they, they seem to have come with a lot of baggage um, from what you see. They, they, they just don't, nothing seems to be good written about them. Do you know what I mean? They just seem to be like they've got issues of the clubs they own. I think they've, they've got legal challenges going on elsewhere. They, As I said, I don't quite get it. It just it, The whole thing doesn't seem right. It seems to be a real mess. They really just need to be sort of a club that needs to get out, one, get out of trouble uh, get their stadium sorted out, get this financial fair play sorted out, and then really they need to get this ownership. There's a few things they need to get dressed, this football club. But uh, no, I, as I say, I do feel for Everton fans, really. It must be a very stressful time. Um, I know we've been through it uh, over the years, and we West Ham fans. And, you know, we remember when we obviously had a, a period when we looked quite doomed financially. So um, we, we know the stress of it. But yeah, it must be horrible because, as I say, there's a list of things they need to get sorted first. Um, against West Ham, though, as I say, I think we're we're in for a tough game. I think that this points um, business, the fact that they've been handed four back, will give them a real big lift. And I've got a feeling West Ham will be walking into a rather uh, raucous uh, Goodison Park, actually. I think they're going to be right up for it. And I think it's going to be a tough, tough afternoon for us. I think we're going to have to be really, you know, roll our sleeves up and be up for it. Um, Everton play... A very sort of direct style. Um, they're going to be quite. I've always got a lot of balls in the air, set pieces. I think it's going to be. It's going to be one of them games. We're going to have to um, be quite up to the task. I think. I, I think it will suit us. Though I've, I've got a feeling that when you think of a David Moyes side, I think these sort of games sometimes suit us, where where we've got a team that are just going to be pretty similar. I imagine they're going to be play, playing quite deep. I think they're going to want to protect their goal. They're not going to want to lose the game. That, that that's going to be their mindset. We we know that West Ham's mindset, typically in these sort of uh, fixtures, is to let's protect our goal, let's defend and see if we can nick a goal, i.e. on the counter or a set piece. You get the feeling Everton are going to be pretty similar to that. Uh, I, I, even though it's a home game and uh, and they'll want to, obviously lift, the crowd are going to be up for it, I can't imagine they're going to go and gung-ho for this. I think they're going to try and nick it, much like West Ham. But uh, that possibly will suit West Ham, actually. Um with the players we've got, um, and especially when we've got players like Thomas Suchek, who played so well against Brentford, you know, surprisingly, actually played so well. Um, it, it just gives you a little bit of confidence, actually, in this one. Um, a couple of players I want to talk about for Everton. I do admire, I do like, I think, uh, Calvert-Lewin. Um, I know he's uh, a ling- his injury problems and sort of, uh, I think there's been ups and downs of him in the press, etc. or whatever. But do you know what? I think he's a, he's a good player. On his day, he's very good. If you can keep him fit, he, he will get you goals. He's, he's been very good for them. Uh, Anana, obviously, another player I, I really admire. One that we were heavily linked with. And really, I think he chose Everton over West Ham for what I remember of it. Um, but I, I really rate him. He's, he's a really, really good player. Um, 
uh, yeah, I, I, I'm one of their sort of shining lights. I, I, I don't think he's quite got going 100 yet. He's probably not hit the the headlines just yet, but he is a good player. I really rate him, and they're, they're not a bad side of it. And they're really not. They got they got a few decent players, um, but you know, obviously, Jordan Pickford as well, very good goalkeeper, England number one. But they are in a mess. Uh, I mean, even even if you park the whole points deduction and all the ownership, if you actually just look at their form, it isn't great. Um, that they are going to be in a relegation battle to the end, as far as I'm concerned. I cannot see them just pulling away and getting and getting comfortably safe anytime soon. I really just don't see it. Um, as I say, this is a big game for them. Really big game. I imagine Everton fans will be going to this with um, um, not not saying confident. I don't. I, I doubt there'd be many Everton fans that'd be very confident because of obviously the situation they're in and how they've been for quite some time. Um, but I said they, they might be sort of um, hopeful. Possibly a little bit hopeful that you know what we might be able to do something against West Ham. So West Ham are going to have to be really, really up for this game. It's going to be a very tough afternoon. I, think. I don't think it's going to be a team that we're going to see feeling like this team are on their way to going down. I think it's going to be a uh, yeah a, a real battle, and, and and we've got to be very much up for that. Uh, let's talk about West Ham though. Um, David Moyes has done his press conference. He talked about the injury situation. Uh, very minor actually. Pretty pr- pretty good actually. We've got um, no Maxwell Corner. I mean this guy. I mean. Let's be honest, he's been an absolutely disastrous uh, signing for West Ham. It has just been an awful, awful experience for club and player. Uh, we just never get to see him play, do we? And we never, he never gets a run, um, never gets a go. He's not trusted by Moyes at all. Um, and, you know, with the fact that we've got no Ben Rama now, no four nows, this is the sort of perfect time for him. You know, this is your time. Get, get Go and show us what you're made of. And he's injured. He's injured now. I'm going to be out for a while. So I, I don't know the update of it, but it sounds like he's got a, a, a strain, muscle strain. But it just never – he's always injured. There's always problems with him. Um, yeah, disaster. Absolute disaster. Be a pl- player that we, we – well, have, have, funny enough, Everton were heavily linked with, weren't they, in, the, in January – um, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up there in the summer or elsewhere. I, I don't think he'll be kept on a West Ham. It's just been an absolute disaster. I think it's one we need to just cut our losses really at the end and move on because we're just not seeing him. We're just not seeing him play, are we? And it's a shame because you feel like if he got a run in the team, Max Cornet, he'd, he'd probably be all right. He'd probably become a decent player for West Ham. He just never gets a run. He's always injured. There's always problems. And he just never seems to get picked. And then he's always on the bench. When he comes on, he doesn't do a lot. And then he has a half-decent game. And then you don't see him again. It's just... It has been an absolute mess um, of a move, the whole situation. It's a shame, a real shame. Uh, so he's not available. Um, Aaron Creswell is also out for this one. He's um, he's uh, felt his muscles, so he's, he's got a strain. But again, much, so he's not going to be available. Um, no big loss, of course, unless, of course, we get an injury to uh, left back. But even then, I think Ollie Skulls, I'd rather see. Creswell doesn't want to be here, as far as I understand it. So I think he'll be leaving in the summer. So I, I'm not... I'm not that bothered. It's one of those. Uh, the, these are injuries I don't look at and think, oh my God, that's a nightmare. You know, I've, it's, it's a bit of a pain, but it's not the end of the world. Um, look, West Ham are, are coming off the back of a really big performance and big win against Brentford. It really breathed some life into our season again. And we just cannot afford for that to be sucked out of us very quickly again. Do you know what I mean? We don't want to suddenly come out away from this weekend going, oh, we're back to feeling depressed. We want to keep this going, keep this going for the next couple of weeks. Just get that result against Everton, result against Brent, uh, Burnley, and, and as I say, do well in Europe. And all of a sudden, this this season will feel very, very different and we will suddenly start to believe that there's something, there's, that, well, that we could achieve something. We can achieve European football again because we could be well in that mix again. Um and there's no getting away from the, the impact that Lucas Paqueta has had on his return. I mean, you wouldn't have known he was injured. Do you know what I mean? When, when he plays, he plays with so much freedom and enjoyment. And he just looks so, so good. I was so impressed with him. Really, really impressed. Um, yeah, uh, unbelievable. Great player and such a, um, a joy to have him back. And with him playing Kudus, Bowen and Alvarez, all these players, you start now to think, do you know what? Got a good chance. We have really got a good chance. I'll come to the pred- uh, prediction in a minute. Um as I say, I think this is an opportunity for West Ham to get the season back on track. This is a big game. This is a really big game. And I really don't want to see us blow it. I, I, I really hope we don't. It is such an important fixture. And, and one we just do not want to miss out on capitalising on, you know, that momentum. Let's, let's get that feeling back of, yes, come on, West Ham, you know, a bit, bit of belief. And um, we certainly, I, I don't know about you, certainly get that feeling this week after that performance um, on Monday night. I just thought, oh, do you know what? We, we might be able to do something now. And, yeah, I, I, I'm hope that's going to be, you know, uh, repeated again uh, against Everton. 
This is my team. I want to know your team and I want to know your predictions. If you get your prediction right, you went to the draw and you get a free uh, gift. Uh, so why not get your prediction in? But I'd like to see your team as well. Um, I imagine we're going to have very similar teams. I really do. I think we're going to have very... I'd be surprised if there's too much difference here, but we'll see. This is my team, what I want to go for. Uh, Ariola in goal. Uh, I'm Sue Fowl, uh, Mavropanos, Agurd and Emerson's my back line. I, I don't want to see Zuma playing in this. I think the reality is he probably will be, being West Ham captain. Um, and just, you know, you know David Moyes, you just know him. But I, I, I just, I think he's, he's, he's not good enough. He's been so, so poor for a while now. Um, he, was, he, he wasn't good enough against Brentford. He was our worst player. Um, he's a break. He needs a break. He needs to get better. He needs to get fitter. He's, he's, he looks broken. He looks like a player that desperately needs a rest, um, some time off to try and recuper- recuperate and get back to being decent because he's he looks all over the shop at the moment. And I, I'm really concerned. Uh, although a girl does worry me as well. Um, I just I, I just wouldn't. I, I'd like to see that combination. Maverick Pounce will go. Let's just see how that get, gets on. Um, my midfield is going to be Alvarez and Suchek and James Ward Prowse. Um, I, you know, I've criticised Suchek enough. Um, I've, a lot of people have, you know, he, he has been at times very frustrating, but that was an absolutely excellent performance against Brentford. One of his best, actually, in a West Ham shirt. So really pleased for him. And, and when he played that well, you can't be dropped. And, and he won't be. We know David Moyes. He will not drop him, especially after that performance. No chance. And I think this game will suit him. I think it will. As I say, that sort of direct approach from Everton, I think it will work well. I think it will need him in there. A bit of height those set pieces, being able to defend well, and of course as well, uh, up the other end as well, to hopefully um, get on the end of a decent uh, Ward Prowse cross. So, no, I, I absolutely want to see him play. Alvarez has been excellent as well. Um, front three, uh, Kudus, Bowen and Paqueta. Um, I think it kind of writes itself as team, really. Maybe a couple, but I think it does. I, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on that one. I reckon we're going to win. I've got a feeling we're going to win it. I, I, I'm not being smug. I've just got this feeling. I've got this feeling we're going to build on that result. I think as much as I think Everton are going to be really up for this, I think it's going to be tough. I think we'll have too much for him. I think we'll have a bit too much. If David Moyes has got to get it right. I, I would love to see him take the same approach that he did against Brentford, i.e. get at him. Um, I don't think he will. I've got a feeling that it might be a case of play counter, play more counter-attack football, try and play, like I've said, try and nick the game, try and nick it on the set piece. I don't mind that. I actually don't mind that if it works. but. Obviously, I'd rather see us adopt that aggressive approach. But let's wait and see. I'd like to know you skip score predictions for this one. As I say, you entered the draw. But look, it's a big game, this one, and one that really can cement ourselves back in the European hunt. Come on, your irons. 